Well, g'day, curd nerds. Got a very interesting cheese here. Now, I made a Munster back in uh, early January this year, and I've just cracked it open. Now, I did have a lot of trouble getting the red rind to form during the cheese maturation. And I had been washing it every two days, as it says in the recipe, and I had it at the right temperature, and I had it in a ripening box. Only problem was, blue mold kept getting infected on it. Uh, and look, I thought at the three month mark where it's supposed to be mature, I thought, look, I'll finish up now, we'll see what it tastes like, and I'll, uh, I'll crack it open. Now before I crack it open, let me just go through a few of the steps and you'll see how I made this, what I call my monster monster. There's a bit of a variation on the small ones that I made last time uh, that didn't turn out too well, they just kind of flopped. Um, but yeah, let me just step you through the process and we'll have a look at that before I cut the cheese open. So, I've started at this stage of the video because we've already got a monster video. So if you want to see how I made the monster, then just click through using the link now. So you can see I'm ladling the curds that I've made. Um, to the curds I added some mesophilic culture and some brevi, brevi bacterium linens and uh, heated the curd up, cut the curd and basically didn't stir it, just transferred it straight into the cheesecloth and waited a period of time. And now I'm just skimming using the, uh, it's a skimmer and just ladling that into the uh, basket. There's no cheesecloth in that. I'm just ladling that in and that just drains freely through the holes. Now it does take a fair bit of time. There is a fair bit of it. This basket is quite large. Uh, it's 165 millimeters across and I think it's about 150 millimeters high. So you have to wait in between filling it up um, and you let it settle down. This is over about three hours uh, it took to do this. That's the very last of it there. And that'll settle down further still. So you can see how high I've actually stacked it there. Nice firm curd structure, clear way running off, which is a good sign. So over about the next six or seven hours or so, it'll get to the stage where you can actually put a follower on top of it. And I had a little, just put the vinegar bottle on top, which is about a kilogram of weight, just to compact the curds down a little bit. So when it gets down to about that level, all I do is simply turn it over so it's using, it, using its own weight as pressure and basically um, pressing itself under its own weight. So don't take it out of the mould or whatever, <laughs> it'll go everywhere. So just let it sit like that. Now over as many hours pass, so I just turn it about every two hours and I do this for about a day and it starts to shrink down. You can see there just by the follower that's shrinking down even more. The reason I got the follower on it, I've learnt from experience that if you don't, you'll have very rough looking curd. And uh, if you then go on to uh, wash it, wash the rind, you'll find that uh, the surface will be very uh, very lumpy. Now, what you can do at this stage, once it's gone down about an inch, you can take the curd out, just like that. It's very loose. And you can pop it back into the mould. And then what this does, it helps seal the rind even further. And by um, that flipping action, smooths the bottom part. So you can see that uh, it took up most of the very large mold that I have and uh, and it did develop very well over the the period but the red mold just didn't take hold didn't matter how much I washed it washed it twice weekly anyway uh, let's get on and see how I cut it open just then and see what the paste looks like so as you can see there it, it did go an orangey color 
but you can see it's peppered with blue um, which is penicillium canned uh, penicillium roke 40 it was uh, until about half an hour before this covered in uh, just a little bit of a bloom of white mold as well which was uh, I determined from the smell it smelled very mushroomy so it was uh, penicillium geo oh, sorry geotrichum candidum so let's cut into it it cuts very easily that's quite a firm structure so remember this is after the three months and what I did notice straight away it was peppered with tiny tiny little holes and you'll see that better in a close-up in a second but I thought well if I'm gonna keep some of this and serve it up I'll have to cut this into eighths because it's such a large cheese so I just cut each half into half um, horizontally so we'll just zoom in there you can see how the there's some tiny tiny little holes now I think that's a combination of some gas formation from the mesophilic culture that I used just a little bit of gas action there anyway a fantastic cheese and uh, I'll let Gav get on with the taste test okay well it looked pretty good didn't it so the final verdict of course is always in the tasting doesn't matter how good it looks it's always about the tasting so let's have a taste of this cheese shall we I've got my super sized cracker for my monster monster and we'll get into that shall we so I'm cutting a bit with the paste and the paste is consistent throughout which is really good I was very impressed with that I washed most of the blue and uh, blue mold had a little bit of um, geotrichum candidum around the edges as well as a bit of blue the outside of it was fairly dry it didn't take much to wipe it off um, look it does smell very um, uh, like old socks which is what it's supposed to smell like Brevibacterium linens are supposed to smell like that it does have a red tinge to it with spots of blue um, as I said the paste is consistent throughout there's no wet spots uh, there are no moldy spots within there are no blue veins throughout as well all right so here we go Mmm. I think I've invented a brand new cheese. Oops. Now, it's got undertones of what a monster normally tastes like, just slight. But it also got strong overtones of the the Penicillium Broke 40 that was growing on the outside. Somehow it's managed to, uh, the flavour has managed to permeate all the way through the cheese. I'll have a little bit from the centre in a second and see if that's true all the way through. But within the paste, but it's not really strong. It's not overpowering, which is, I suppose, what I want from this cheese. I wanted it to taste like, well, a monster, of course. So it's a cross between a monster and a blue cheese without blue veins. And without that, I suppose, um, monster flavour. So it's got a cross between both. So I'm quite happy with that. A new sort of cheese. <laughs> um, I don't know, what do I call it? My blue monster or my blue monster monster. Well, that'll do. Sounds pretty interesting. Anyway, so I'm going to have to cut that down into smaller pieces. And I'll have some more. Mmm. Just so you don't think I'm telling the fibs about the taste, it does taste very, very nice. Mm. I've already given some to the official taste testers. They say it's fantastic. And uh, so does my lovely wife, Kim. Anyway, so I'm going to have to cut this into smaller pieces, wrap it up. We're going to a barbecue tomorrow night, so we'll take some of that over there. I'm sure it'll be gladly welcomed. And we'll demolish a bit of that there. It should keep fairly well in the fridge. It probably will have a bit of a tendency to dry out, and that will be okay, actually. It's fairly moist in the middle. It could do with a little bit of drying out. But having said that, it's not moist. It's not moist to touch. It doesn't 
moisture doesn't pop out when you squeeze your finger on it. So I think successful cheese. Three months old, blue monster monster, and uh, yeah, I don't know, it's a bit of a fluke. I don't know if I could try it again or make it again. I didn't put any blue in it. I only put uh, Brevi Black Bacterium Linens in it. So there you go, curd nerds. That's how you make a blue monster monster without trying. Anyway, you can check out how to make a real blue cheese. This is Stilton. Uh, you can have a look at that. And don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel. Uh, click through here. And don't forget to ring the little bell just to make sure that you receive all the notifications every time I post up a new video. Thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.